Hi, I'm Tandresa from English for Ladies and today I'm going to help you understand how you can become a confident English speaker. What are the things that you should consider? What are things that could help you achieve that? And what does it actually mean to be a confident English speaker? There are two kinds of confidence. There is the confidence that you let other people see, okay, is what others can see from how you walk, how you talk, how you act, and how you feel inside yourself, which is self-confidence. I get students telling me, teacher, I want to learn English, but I'm just not very confident and I don't really feel very confident talking to others in English. If you want to become a confident English speaker, but you think you're not confident, well, you've got a problem because you want to become a confident speaker and that's not possible without confidence. But I've got some great news. Confidence is a skill that you learn. People are not born confident. Well, I think people are actually born confident. Uh, when you, if you ask my daughter, do you know this? Well, she's four and she would tell you, yeah, of course I do. So her confidence is like, whoosh. But with time, we lose that because we start to worry what others think. What if I say something and I'm saying it wrong? What are others going to think of my English if I make too many mistakes? Will this make me look stupid, right? So we start worrying, right? It's very important that we work on that during your English learning process. I've never been the most confident person. If somebody had told me a few years back, okay, about anything, YouTube channel, a business, anything that would require me to show up in front of a big audience, that would have been a no-no. Just thinking about that would have caused me a lot of sleepless nights and I would have given you a million reasons why that was not a good idea for me, why that would not work for me, why I couldn't do that, millions. And that's not because my skills have changed. It's actually my mindset. You see, you can fake the outer confidence, how people see you, you can fake that. You can put a nice dress on, some high heels, yes ladies, and well, shake your hair a little bit, give that powerful woman walk and walk through that building as if you're the most confident lady they've ever seen, even if you don't feel like that inside. But is that enough? Well, of course not because once you are put in the position that you have to do something, in this case, speak English, open your mouth and speak, your self-doubts show up. They tell you that, wait, wait, wait a minute, your English is not that great. How are you going to talk like that with all those mistakes that you make? Come on now, you're better off just pretend that you don't see them or get out of this conversation as soon as you can. Remember the first day you start a new job? You walk into that building and you self-doubt everything. I mean, every time somebody looks at you, you think that there's something wrong with you. Maybe you forgot to check your shirt. Maybe you've got some makeup on your face, something not quite right. Or maybe your clothes are not appropriate for this workplace. So there's a lot going on to your head and Every time people look at you, you think that they are doing that because you are standing out for the wrong reasons. But a few weeks later and months, of course, you just stop that. That does not happen anymore, right? You just walk through that corridor as if you own that place. The same happens to the ladies that join our group. At first, they are very self-aware. They're worried about every little word that comes through their mouth. 
And within a few weeks, I can feel their confidence growing. As they build that vocabulary, they learn how to ask certain questions. They understand that other people actually understand you, even if you make a few mistakes along the way. So they start relaxing and enjoying the conversation. Now I need to stop right at this because this is an important part. And I have a question for you. During your English learning process, how often did you have a chance to speak? And when was that? Because my answer would be, well, I could only speak English and express myself during an assignment, when I was actually marked for every word that came from my mouth. It's stressful. So speaking English equals stress. Didn't enjoy doing that. Do you relate to any of that? It's very important to enjoy speaking in English, to talk about things that you are passionate about, you feel like you have something to say. That leads to my number two tip, which is build your vocabulary on something that you want to talk about, on what's important to you right now. Just the other day, one of my students said to me, teacher, you're actually right. I feel very confident talking in English about something that I feel I have enough to say in my language, okay? Because I have vocabulary to translate it to and I'm passionate about that and I could speak for hours. And this is a student that two months ago told me that I can't have a conversation in English at all. I'm not confident to do that. So what happened? Of course, her confidence grew because she showed up every single day. She showed up and enjoyed the conversation and built her vocabulary and her confidence every single day. For me, it's amazing to witness it and to see it happening. And I'm just excited to see where is this going to take her. So my advice here would be build vocabulary on what you need right now. What will get you talking right now? Do you live in an English speaking country and you meet other parents at the park all the time and you feel awkward because you don't really know what to say to them? Build vocabulary in that. Everyday conversations, how to ask them a few questions, have some answers ready because they will help you build the confidence. Because once you do something and you enjoy it and you're doing it correctly, that gives you the boost for the next one. You get a taste of it, right? Once you have a little conversation, you know that next time you can take that longer, right? You have broken that barrier and this is your confidence growing and your self-esteem. And that is a great motivation to keep you moving forward. And that leads us to my third tip, motivation. Motivation is the key to any achievement and is the drive that keeps you going. But where do you find it? You can find it in your goal. What's your goal? What are you trying to achieve through English? Our motto at English for Ladies is empower yourself through English. So how can you empower yourself through English? What can English help you be, do, or achieve? How would that change your life? Just have it crystal clear and even see it in your mind's eye. Just close your eyes and imagine yourself having that, okay? That's something that English could get you and English is something you can learn. Like billions of people out there speak it. So of course you can learn it too, right? So just close your eyes and imagine yourself having achieved that. How does that feel? Excited, right? So use that excitement, a little bit of that excitement every single day to show up, 
right? To build your vocabulary, to learn that grammar rule that you're not very keen on, right? Because, of course, learning a language is a process. It doesn't happen overnight and it doesn't have to be easy, but you can enjoy that. And remember, no excuses. I'm too old, I'm too young, I'm too busy. And, and, as ladies, as mothers, wives, I know that we are so bad at putting ourselves second or third or fourth or fifth. Just never first. But please, I know that. It's a mother's instinct to put everything else, everybody else's needs first and then your own. But if learning English is something that could make you happier, then know that that is going to reflect in your family too. So make sure to find time for that and don't feel guilty for doing so because you're doing it not just for yourself, but for the future your future and the future of your family too. So, use your motivation, have it there in front of you as that uh, cup, that thing that you want to go and grab, that victory. So, eyes on the prize and enjoy the process. You will get there. Number four, do not start a course or anything, not even self-studying something doubting that this is not going to work. If you do something believing that it is not going to work, guess what? It will not work, right? Humans, we are so good at sabotaging our success, our results. Because now I've said that this is not working, but it's starting to work and I've said that, I believe that, so I don't accept something different, right? So we sabotage ourselves and we just give up the course completely to prove it that yes, I said it's not going to work and it didn't. But don't do that to yourself, okay? Don't put yourself through the hassle of starting and quitting and starting and quitting. Just believe that you are going to achieve that because you will and stick to it. Stick to the process. It takes a while. It doesn't happen overnight. But feel that little improvement that you're doing every day. And don't compare yourself to others. You only have yourself to compare to. Do you feel today that you're a little bit more confident than you were yesterday or a week ago or a month ago? Great, that's you improving, working on it. So well done you. But if you completely block the idea that it could not happen, then might as well just give that up, okay? Because teachers are not magicians, right? I don't do magic. I can't make my students build confidence and start speaking fluently with a magic stick. But even if I did, I would still need to ask them if they believed in magic, because my magic would only work if they believed in it. So, do you believe that you could become a confident English speaker? It's very important that you feel that yes right in your heart. And of course you will. As I mentioned in the beginning, confidence is a skill that you learn. And with any skill, you have to practice. It's with practice that you become better. If you do a hairdressing course, you don't just become an amazing hairdresser as soon as you walk out of the course. If you study to become a teacher, you don't just walk out of there the greatest teacher the society has ever seen. You need to practice. Right? You practice and practice and practice and you become better at it every single day. English is the same and so is confidence. It's a skill and you can learn it. I've studied French four years in school. 
I can't ask you three questions. I can, but they are, what's your name? Where are you from? And how old are you? If I went to a friend's party and there was a French girl there, there is no chance I would even open my mouth to try and speak to her in French. I would tell her that I don't know French and that would be much easier because it's how I've learned French. I've learned French through books that you had to read a text after the teacher. I did that perfectly, no trouble. You had to answer some questions from the text. Easily done, it was there for me. But as I walked out of that school, four years later, I knew little to no French. I had never asked a question to anybody in French. I don't consider myself a French speaker, but let me surprise you. I was the best in that class, which means nobody in my class knows French either. This is why at English Everyday for Ladies, we have live lessons every single day. Ladies in our program have a chance to talk to a professional teacher and other ladies from different countries of the world. Our lessons are designed to help them enjoy a conversation in English as they talk about interesting topics. We share experiences as we talk about traveling abroad. We share recipes with each other as we're talking about food or cooking. We laugh with each other's funny stories and we get shocked by our culture differences or different traditions from around the world because we share our own feelings and thoughts and experiences and that's what gets my students excited to come back to another lesson. They love it and I love seeing their progress and I can't wait to see them reaching their dreams as they become the confident English speakers they've always wanted to be. You can find the link for our program in the description down below. You can find more information there and of course you can join us if this is what you are after and I can't wait to see you in the next lesson. Now let me recap what we did today in some nice and simple words. Well, first start speaking English as soon as you can with as little English as you have with whatever level you are at right now. Okay, building confidence takes time so you want to start today. Number two, find a partner, find a friend, find somebody you can practice English with or just enjoy this journey with. But please don't do that in the websites you don't trust. I see it happening all the time. I don't think it's safe to share your personal information just because somebody declares that they need a speaking partner or they want to practice speaking with you every day. I wouldn't do that. Find someone you know or like build that trust before you share your personal information with someone. Number three, don't worry about your grammar mistakes and just enjoy a conversation. Number four, stop translating. The expressions you use in your country to greet people, to ask how they are, to talk about their day, to talk about their kids, they might not necessarily mean much if you translate it from your language to English. Don't have to do that. Just get ready, like full expressions, sentences, uh, questions, answers, anything you need ready and just adopt them to start with till you build that confidence to create those longer sentences yourself. And remember, the answer is in the question. So spend some time studying questions in English because being confident at asking questions helps you give answers easily and that just keeps the conversation flowing, right? And number five, explore new ways of teaching. 
just be open-minded about it, right? Don't say, oh, I would never learn that or that doesn't work for me. Just try it, right? Put a podcast on the way to work as you drive or as you're on the bus commuting to work or while doing housework. Read in English every chance you get. Read a blog, read an article about something that interests you. Listen to music in English. Find a band, a singer that you really enjoy listening to and just do that repetitively again and again and again and you will steal some phrases from here, some from there and that's easily done because you're just enjoying some music and you're using that to help you. And all these little things here and there make the whole journey just that extra easier and extra enjoyable. They all require little effort, but they will help you get great results. Well, these were my tips on how you can become a confident English speaker. And if you liked this video, please like and subscribe so you won't miss any of our future videos. See you soon!